Hey there, Bacon Bits. It's Captain Ace Bacon speaking, and we're playing a new game, Dead Frontier Outbreak 2. We're gonna jump right into it. 29th, 2016. Our lives changed forever. Our lives changed forever. Man-made virus. Man-made virus. Released into the population. But into the population. The ravenous flesh-eating zombies. And the chicken box. It was way worse. It was. It was. A, it was. A, it was. Or it was. You know. It was kind of tough to decide. It was a 50-50. By driving deep into the Either zombies or yeah, you know, you had itchy chicken pox. When we arrived, we were relieved. Not only to find her parents still alive, but with the help of the locals, they had managed to fortify the farm. So we're on the fortified farm, fortified firm. The granary held enough grain. And grain. We've got so much grain. Mmm. Grain soup. Grain jerky. Grain cereal. More grain than you could ever shake a stick at. And with the ammunition of these rednecks, you know, we're, we're fantastic. Oh, the filth. Cholera. Oh, it's like the Oregon Trail all over again. It was clear that if someone didn't go and find some medicine soon, we'd all be wiped out within a month. Though it's still healthy enough to hold a gun. Mm, I get Wiped out by the My cholera and the cholera zombies. And I drew the short straw. Into town. I wasted no time and started preparing immediately. I realized that even decisions that seemed unimportant at the time could make the difference between life and death later on. With that in mind, I headed to my father-in-law's wardrobe and started to, to steal think about his nice clothing. So, here we go. This is it. Text-based adventure. What are we going to wear? Wake up in the morning and put on shorts and t-shirt? That seems stupid. Uh, old biker leathers. You know, that'd probably be good for if we got nibbled on. Uh, camouflage fatigues. Oh, that's got to be good. Hide from humans and stuff, you know. But, um... Me, I think I'm gonna throw on some jeans and a suit jacket I chose a with lots of pockets and, and uh, hope, hope, yeah. Bit of yeah, I don't, I don't know about protection, but I will look stylish. And that's that's element number one. I knew that I was heading that's pi that's pillar number one in our four four pillar uh, strategy of surviving the zombie apocalypse. Uh, pillar two is ammunition. Pillar three is grain. But pillar one. I'm sorry, I was talking. I didn't listen. Uh, meat grinder, zombies, armory, Pfft. shotgun. I took the shotgun, realizing it was easy to use and powerful at both close and medium range. And it's zombies. I mean, come on, you gotta you gotta take the shotgun for the I zombie brains. I grabbed brains. To carry some additional supplies. It was imperative that I traveled light so I could complete my mission as quickly as possible. My fellow survivors were counting on me getting back with antibiotics as soon as possible. They were counting. The risk of being unable to outrun the infected sheep at the same time. To take. Actually, they were more likely counting grains. Uh, so what was I? I'm I'm grabbing something extra, you know, extra ammunition, first aid kit, a rope, crowbar. Let's see. We can. We could take the extra ammunition and mow down some extra zombies, or we could run away from them. We we can't do anything with rope. Forget that. No rope. Uh, first aid kit. We we really if we go down, we're probably just gonna get killed. So let's take the crowbar because we can break into places and beat people up with it. Both a useful tool and a deadly weapon. The crowbar. Exactly. I'm glad. We're, we're all on the same page here. I was page one of my autobiography. For the first time since arriving, I found the grain. Afraid. And I, I felt I truly afraid. But if I didn't go, what little remained of my family would be wiped out. I knew my wife was sick, and unless I got her the medicine soon, mm -hmm. after all we'd been through... After everything... I put up with so much crap and she's just gonna die. No. Uh. 
Okay, just a little side note. IRL, if I didn't say goodbye to my wife, she'd murder me. So we've got to got to go with that. back inside the house, climbed the stairs to our bedroom, and slowly pushed open the door. My wife lay asleep in bed. My wife. She was asleep, so I woke her up, and she was very upset. Or, you know, I, 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 I let her... I left her alone because she's nasty and sweaty. Jesus. Gently on the forehead, whispered, Goodbye, my love. Goodbye, my love. As I walked back to the silent, but deadly. That I would find the antibiotics she needed or die trying. Or die trying. I took a deep hey, zombies! Out of the there they are. Zombies. I see at least three. I heard the gate swinging closed followed by the unmistakable sound of it being securely locked behind me. Mm -hmm. I Unmistakable. What if you were mistaken? They're just, uh, they're playing like a tape recorder on the other side, just to mess with you. And I considered finding alternative transportation. Um, we can walk into town, we can find a bicycle, or we can hotwire an abandoned car. Uh... I don't, I don't know about you, Beck and Bits, but I don't really like to walk. Bicycles are fun. We could hot, we could do this. We could hotwire the abandoned car. But why is it abandoned? Is it out of gas? Did the previous owner get mauled in it? I don't want to. I don't want to do, mess with that. Let's just take the bicycle. I had to walk quite a while before I eventually spotted an old and slightly rusty bicycle sticking out of a hedgerow. Oh, well then why is that even an option? I thought you know. He saw, he saw a bicycle in an abandoned car and was like, I can ride that, hotwire that, or just walk. These are the options. Or I can turn around and just go eat the last of the grain. Well, see, then it was all worth it. After a couple of hours. I eventually came to the outskirts. After a couple of hours. Life had been pretty run down even before the outbreak, and I had struggled oh. to imagine it being. We we lived on the time. swanky part of town. I was wrong. Good deal. Once the streets. I was wrong. Prostitutes, but they were littered with petty gangs, and prostitutes, corpses. and the air corpses. Was with flies and maggots crawled and squirmed among the bodies. I took a moment to regain my nom, 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 nom. Missing that grain by now, aren't you? Notice what I was standing on. As I turned the corner, I saw another man standing some distance down the road. Uh oh. I had no idea if it was a survivor like myself or one of the infected. Uh huh. Well, let's just see. Let's see. We can shoot him, talk to him, sneak past him, attack him with the crowbar. I. I don't really want to shoot the guy if it's a survivor, you know, say la vie, you know, let's let bygones be bygones, no need randomly attacking people. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we can talk to him or sneak past him, those are the, let, let's do one of those two. Have you ever seen The Walking Dead, The Governor? I. It's probably him. The governor's just probably walking around. I don't want to. I don't want to talk to him. Let's just sneak past him. I couldn't be sure if the man was still human or not, and I didn't want to waste ammo unnecessarily. There were plenty of cars and other debris between us, so I decided to carefully sneak past him instead. Like a ninja. Ninja versus zombie. Having dealt with the situation, I continued on down the street towards a small chemist. To my relief and surprise, the building didn't show any outward signs of having been looted. Yeah. The door was closed and the glass window was still intact. That's cool. I glanced around Good deal. to make sure there were no infected nearby, and then tried the door. It was locked. Well, fortunately, I brought the key. There we go. Let's first break that lock with the crowbar. Whole reason we brought the crowbar that. crowbar and wedged it between the door and the frame. With a little bit of effort, I was able to lever the door open. Allowing only a brief cracking noise to give away my position. Yay! As I entered the building and looked around, I realized we found no grain and realized this place sucked. It would be kept in the back of the shop, so I carefully made my way towards the counter. Just in front of it, I noticed a body wearing what appeared to be a white lab coat. It was probably the chemist. From the blood stain and bullet hole in his back, 
I surmised that he had been shot to death. 